Well, it seems to be that there's an implication that what Gauss's law is useful for, the way it's being framed, is, is this assumption that um, you've got to pick a symmetry where E is constant in order that you pull it out of the integral and simplify things. And that's not what Gauss's law states. Right. Um, and it's not the only way Gauss's law can be used. This is an example the student, you know, recognizes that it can't be used in its simplest form where E is constant. But uh, you don't have to use Gauss's law. Well, I mean, it's asked, this is specifically asking, can you use Gauss's law to compute E at a point? Right. Look at the question. Right. Yeah. right. And you're not going to be able to use Gauss's law to compute the E to the outside of Q. How would you do it? How would you do it? Knowing the integral of a function doesn't is one di one piece of information, and if that's all you know, there's no right. way to compute the, the value of the, the function, function at all points. Right. All you know is the sum. Right. Sum. So you know the sum of a bunch of things. How do you figure out one thing? Symmetry. Symmetry. Yeah. Right. But it's not. This but, but in this problem, without, I, we'll talk about this afterwards. Doesn't okay. have the question. It certainly doesn't have to happen simply. We'll talk about this later. Okay. So so another student says. In order to do the surface integral, we would need to be able to describe the electric field in all space around the cube, uh, which would make the integral pointless anyway. So, <laughs> okay. So then there's the, then there's another group of students who have the correct answers, but they're making these imprecise symmetry arguments, and it's hard to say whether it's because it's on exam and they just know they just you know they're in a hurry and they just want to write a general idea of what they're thinking, or it's because they're actually thinking an imprecise <coughs> symmetry argument. But I, I've definitely observed students in the tutorials and in the help room making these very imprecise symmetry arguments that when I follow up, they really are actually not, you know, they're not thought out. So um, one student says, using Gauss's law to find P at a point would not work very well because the sphere lacks the correct symmetry. Um, it could, uh, sorry, yeah, the square lacks the correct symmetry. And it could be that they are actually thinking about all the different ways that it lacks the correct symmetry, or it could just be like, well, it's not symmetric enough. Uh, and another person just says, there is not enough symmetry to do this. And these, these aren't, I mean, these aren't wrong an answers, but they're not as uh, well articulated as the previous ones. Um, and then there's different ways of being wrong. Work it out. Uh, students, <laughs> <laughs> students um, here's, a, here's a one that's most, a like, sort of been commonly <laughs> observed before, which is students overgeneralize the results from the highly symmetric charge distributions um, to a situation like this. It's not, that doesn't have a, a usable symmetry. Um, so some students say yes, because Gauss's law applies and there is symmetry in the distribution. So it's true, I mean, a, a, a cube does have some symmetry. Um, it's just not one you can exploit with Gauss's law. So they're like, well, I see some symmetry, good to go on Gauss's law. <laughs> um, and uh, then th another student says since there are two of the same type of surface, they'll have the same normal vector so you could easily calculate the E for both surfaces. So this person thinks that because the Gaussian surface looks like the Q, then they're okay to use Gauss's law. And there's some people who are just like, yes, and then plugged in Gauss's law without, you know, there's a substantial number of people who I didn't write down, because I mean, they just plugged it into Gauss's law. They picked a Gaussian surface, then they said E times the area of that Gaussian surface equals the charge enclosed, but they just hadn't thought through the necessary symmetry arguments at all. And so they were sort of completely overgeneralizing. They weren't using any criteria to judge whether or not to use Gauss's law. Do you think that the students might have thought that the electric field also has the same symmetry as the distribution? This person, I, I can't, they seem to be talking about normal vectors, so I'm not sure whether they're <coughs> thinking that E is actually pointing normal or they're just thinking about the normal vectors of the two surfaces. Um, it, it, I didn't see any clear cases where students thought the electric field <coughs> was pointing out like a cube. Like this person could did that. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, there were, and there were some people who, who clearly said that they thought E was the same same magnitude everywhere on the outer Gaussian surface. Um, so then there's this other difficulty I was I was um, talking about that I think it, I, I that I think maybe new, which is the, the students who think that it's just going to be messy. Um, here's one. Here's a student says, "Can you use Gauss's law?" Well, I don't think so. It probably won't be simple because there's no easy symmetry that allows E to be pulled out of the integral, so it'd be a mess. Perhaps someone with crazy math skills could. And there were a whole lot of people who were something like this, who thought, well, if I had a I computer, I could do this. If I had crazy math skills, if I was the instructor, um, you know, it, it's messy, but it, it could be done. When in fact, if you can't pull the E out of the integral, you can't use this integral form of Gauss's law to compute E. You can use it for other things. Um, so now I'm going to show you some 
data where I break up the student answers to this midterm. I'm showing you, this is on the first midterm of last semester of the UNM class. Uh, and also, it was on the final from Steve's Paradigm class. So and they had different, kind of different instruction on this. So I thought I'd show both of them. Um, so here, um, this is the percent who answered, who answered each way um, to the, can we use Gauss's law in this, in this particular situation? The correct answer, which is no, we can't. Um, it's similar. Uh, well, let's, we'll focus uh, I'm on sorry, what, what are these color codes? Uh, yeah. So, yes, yeah, so the blue is the, is the CU students and the um, pink is paradigm students. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, let's look at the CU students first, which is the blue. Does everybody know what paradigm is? I, I, I don't. Yeah, this is Steve's paradigm. Do you want to talk a little bit about it? Yeah, so I gave a talk um, briefly earlier about uh, the Oregon State University Paradigms course. So I spent oh, okay. um, four weeks teaching this material. Um, so it's a little concentrated uh, class focused on vector fields and symmetries, which concentrates a lot on electric and magnetic fields. And so we covered Gauss's law, and there was a great deal more emphasis on, on how do you actually use symmetry arguments. So, so the students had to, had, were, were required to generate the symmetry arguments rather than wave their hands. And in 3310, they were in our course. Um, you know, it was, it was a symmetry argument that might have been modeled once in the course. In, in the course. And then there was a question in the tutorial where you were supposed to be using a symmetry argument to answer it. But it, there wasn't like so much requirement of explicit symmetry arguments. I get the sense it's from um, and then Steve's paradigm course. Uh, so then we're look, looking just at the CU, which is this light blue. You can see nearly the same amount of people got it correct, saying, no, you cannot use Gauss's law. I said, you could use Gauss's law, but it'd be really hard and I wouldn't want to. Um, so this is a quite a common um, Difficulty in our in our in our juniors. Um, interestingly, and then the, and then there's a substantial fraction of people who also are just like yes, good to go, gas is law, who really don't say anything about. Uh, most of these people don't make any criteria for when you can or cannot use gas is law. They're just like yep, let's do it. Um, and then in in Steve's paradigm class, it's a little different. They do a little better about getting it right, although I'm not, I'm, I, I haven't determined if any of these differences are significant, so I'm just talking about the trend for now. Um, but then they get it wrong in a different way. Not so many people uh, are saying, oh, it's going to be really messy. Uh, instead, most people are saying, go ahead, use Gauss's law, it's fine. But what's interesting is there's about half of these people who say it's fine or make, make an explicit argument about when one can use Gauss's law, um, like this person. Um, so Gauss's law can only be used to compute the E-field if the E-field does not depend on what's being integrated over. So they made a correct uh, assessment of when, when one can and cannot use Gauss's law, but then they go on to say, well, in this case, that's fine. E is, in, you know, if e is gonna be constant because we have plenty of symmetry. Um, and there was, there was about, about half the students who said you could use Gauss's law made a statement similar to this, uh, to this one where they were saying, you know, you can only use Gauss's law when you can pull E out of the integral, or, or something like that. Um, so I think that's interesting, and I'm not sure which is a preferable wrong, uh, because it's, it's, it's just different steps. Like, these, these students know, you know, have thought through the steps of Gauss's law, but then haven't thought through the symmetry arguments. And I feel like these students at least um, implicitly have thought through the symmetry arguments. They might not have made them as, as, as explicit as they could, but then they haven't thought through the criteria for using Gauss's law. They haven't thought through what would be the next step in this messy process that I envisioned. 